What does a beautiful future look like to you? You can flip a negative mood on its head. This was a talk that was all over the place, but then New York, you are all over the place. There are experiences that you just don't get anywhere else. This is a question for you, Alice. What made you decide to direct this film? When was it time? I think the only reason to make a movie is if you can't help it. Hiding in the dark, hiding in the street. Alice Dinor, right? And if what was following me. I've been wondering where you went. I read the script and uh, I just didn't have a choice. Oh, how's the blood hunting me? It was an act of survival for me. I don't believe anyone who says you can have it all. Don't let me go. Because you can't. And sometimes people you love is coming for me through the trees. Sorry. Sometimes the people you love get hurt on the way. I guess it's all part of the ride. And you pray to God that it will be worth it at the end. Do you think it was worth it? Welcome everyone to a discussion I am so excited to be a part of because the second you watch Losing Alice, all you want to do is call every single one of your friends and sit on Zoom and talk about it and dissect the complex relationships and think about the meanings behind all of the decisions that are made. So this is going to be a blast for me personally and hopefully for you. Losing Alice, which is streaming on Apple TV+, Plus, yet another incredible TV series to come out of Israel, is about a director named Alice, played by Ayala Zor, who feels like she may be past her time of creative fulfillment when she meets a very compelling screenwriter named Sophie, played by Lehi Kornowski, created, produced, and directed by Sigal Avin. Losing Alice is thrilling, it's dramatic, it's spellbinding, it's creepy, it's exciting, it's sexy, and it is already one of the most talked about shows this year. Before I bring in our guests, let's watch some clips of the show. And welcome to Sigal, Ayelet, and Lehi. Hi. Hi, Hi. Jessica. I'm so happy to be with all of you. I want to start with Seagal. Tell me, how how did the idea for this show come into your head? Oh, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> I, it started, I think, from the image of the, the two women on the train, which we see in the pilot episode. And I started exploring those two characters, the older director and the younger screenwriter fan and and it kind of I kind of went from there I mean I, I started um, exploring those characters understanding what they want from each other I really I really kind of connected and, and loved this the, you know the Alice character and 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 thought I could 
that could be like a portal of all these things, I guess I wanted to say. And um, I think that the fact that, that the image was on the train kind of, um, I understood that it, it's time for the, the genre that I always wanted to do, I guess. I grew up on, 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 on this on this genre and and it was like I, th I think I always knew there were there would be a moment when I would finally have uh, have my moment with this genre as well so that's how kind of I wanted to ask about casting this show because without these two people I can't even imagine anyone else being in these roles and it's so important to have the exact right person for Alice and the exact right person for Sophie. So what was it about these two actresses that made you say, I want them for these roles? And Ayala and Lee, I'm coming to you next on that one. <laughs> uh, first of all, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I don't, uh, you know, I... I I can't I can't imagine these characters done by anyone else and I was lucky and fortunate to have these really amazing amazing actresses I think Ayala and Lee are and and really and, and the trust that's needed uh, between directors and, and and actors to to do such these parts but um uh, for so Lee came in for Sophie. I think the first day, the first day we were doing auditions for Sophie. Lee Marshmallow is the uh, amazing uh, casting director, and I think from the first time Lee he came in, it was obvious she was Sophie, and we kept bringing her back to matches and auditions just to be sure because we were like. There was a dream of having, for some, I knew it was her, some wanted like a, a face that nobody had seen before. And at some point I was like, look all you want, that she's Sophie. And so, so it was actually, it, and, and I was still writing uh, some of the episodes at that point. So I actually already had Leahy in mind, like writing some of the episodes for Sophie. And then Alice was like we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't find her. And at some point, I you know I was that people were so she was in Los Angeles. Yeah, no, she was lost. She lost Alice. I was losing. Yeah, I, she was. And you know, Ayala was Ayala was of course uh, on the list and one of the people we were thinking of. But and she was in L.A. and she. She wouldn't audition on um, on Skype. There was no Zoom back then, and and then and so and and really all of Israel's like most amazing actresses were auditioning for it, and you know th and they were amazing, but there was something missing, and I wasn't ha like I wasn't finding the thing that I needed, and also the dynamics be when we were doing matches between. Sophie and and whoever was auditioning for Alice, it was more of a of a mother daughter kind of chemistry, which is wrong for for the series. And then by chance, uh, we've told this story a lot of times, but it was Passover, and I thought you know a lot of times during during the holidays, people from abroad are in Israel and. Um, I just texted and and we were like in pre pre production and had to find an actress and I texted Ayala if uh, maybe she was in Israel and she was not because of the holidays because her mother was was um, sick and she came injured. in to read injured and she came in to to read with um, Lehi and Gal and. And it was just the moment she walked in, and and the chemistry she had, they had together. It was it was clear that that that's it, that that's the show. The chemistry was suddenly like two rival worthy rivals, and and this tension and and everything that Alice and Sophie needed to have. And I yell Ayala, can you tell me a little bit about that day when the two of you tested together? 
Yeah, I. Uh, it's true. I didn't. I didn't want to audition on Skype. I did not think I would be. I would be getting the part with that um, boundary. You know, I just didn't trust myself, and so I let it go. And then my mom was injured, and I had to fly her from the U.S. to uh, Israel for a an elbow in, um, surgery. Uh, she came to visit me um, and fell down. And so my mind was was not at all around getting a, a role or anything like that. And when Sigal texted me again and the timing of it all, and I had a hunch that something's weird is happening, you know. It's always with my mom that things interesting are happening to me that I thought, oh, I should probably do it no matter what. And I said to Sigal that I'll do it. And she said it would be a match with Lihi and with Gal. And so I uh, came in and I remember that the first thing that happened to me was... So I was coming just to, to make, it, make it clear from a very non-glamorous background, from hospitals and flights and just being a mom. And it, it, it was very, oh, now I'm walking into an audition. And I had no concept of like how many auditions... Uh, and Tess Lee, he went through and how long Siga was looking. I was very much in that, my non-glamorous hospital mode. And the first thing that happened was that uh, Lee, he said, how can I have a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> and she freaked me out so badly <laughs> and put me in a stage where actually she actually did a, me a huge favor because she immediately put me in a stage where Alice is compared to uh, Sophie in that particular moment because, um, you know, I, it's, it was kind of like the, 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 the positioning of me not having anything special going right now and the hospitals and all that and then coming into a room thinking, oh, here's the actress, you know, that's supposed to be, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, coming from the U.S., you know, all that stuff, and I, it immediately had me thrown off my game, and I had to play the game. Um, and and right then and then, I realized that this was kind of where Alice was for that particular scene. And then Gal came in, and we did the marriage scene, and there's something very special about him. He is not the actor per se, you know, the actor that studied three years and, you know, and did Shakespeare or whatever. He's a musician, he's an artist, and he's a very truthful, honest, his performance is very raw, and I really dig that. I really, I was very, immediately very connected to him, and I remember reading with him, and I felt very comfortable, and then I remember when I met with Sigal that evening, when she said, it's yours, what do you think, and, but ha let's have a conversation, I, I remember saying, but... Lee is Sophie, and I remember saying, and Gal is my husband, right? <laughs> I, I was already attached in some way to the whole process, and it was really... Lee, did it, when, when you and Ayala had met and when you tested together, did it feel different for you? Because the connection between these two women is so complex, and it really just runs the gamut of respect and stalker and adoration and revulsion and there there are so many things and did did you have that immediately with her i think that i had it immediately with her but i didn't uh but i didn't know it you know because i was i uh i admire i yell it from very since uh, you know from very since i was young and and she entered the, to the room and I was so excited and I really wanted to do a selfie with her. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I was like, I made a lot of editions of Sophie and all the time I was like, oh my God, when Sigal will tell me if I get the part or not get the part, you know? And so we had that connection and when, she, when Ayelet gets into the room, 
I was like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> I had to do a picture with her. But, um, so yeah, it's very funny. Um, and uh, and I was, uh, you know, stupid and a bit Sophie. It was a bit Sophie. To, it was a bit the act of Sophie, you know. Um, but true. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that, um, I think that while we shooted, so... I think that Ayelet made a really um, a smart decision and really loyal to, to the story because she didn't want us to be friends. She didn't want us to be really connected, you know, between the takes because then the tension would go away and, she, and she, it was really important to her. And only when I watched the series, only when I watched, like a year after, I understand that how how it was important uh, that uh, I had a decision, you know, because because then I I saw the tension and and all what Sigal was telling me all the time that you know actress after actress that came to the room and she all the time felt that it's a daughter and a mom, and suddenly they have two women, two generations, but it's uh, and they have all the complexity of their relationship, you know? So, yeah. Leah, I'm curious how you figured out how to approach just how unhinged Sophie is throughout the series, because some, there'll be an episode and, and it's so gradual. It's such, it's so beautifully paced and gradual that all of a sudden something that might've shocked you in episode one by episode four or five, you're like, yeah, that's Sophie. You know, <laughs> how did you, how did you know how to adjust just how uh, maybe unstable at times she is? Um, Actually, I had an immediate connection with the, with Sophie, like from the beginning, you know, uh, when I got the text for the first edition. So uh, she has, uh, it was the train scene and she has like a real uh, big monologue there. And I felt that I can under, like, I felt that I can hear her tone, like, I don't know, like, and Siga loved it. I didn't know that Siga loved it. After, just after we, uh, after I got the part, she said that she, she loved the tone that I paint, you know, the monologue and the sentences. But, um, but I felt like, you know, I had so much auditions that I felt like every audition I'm getting closer to the character and I understand her more and more. And, and I felt like if, if, if I can, um, if I want to play Sophie, so I need to be like the most, um, like to have the most confidence that I have. So I had to search all the confidence that I have and to be shameless, to be shameless with, you know, to, with eye contact, to be shameless, to just touch you if I want to be, you know, to break all the, um, all the distance that you have with, with normal people when you meet them. So, and she, she's written like that. And so I understand that she, she, that's, that's the character. That's how she, that's how she acts. That's how she lives, you know? And of course, uh, I all the time search for something like why she does that, why she's so unique with those uh, freely way and sexually open way, you know? Why, why she does it? Because she's not, you, you don't see, even if you see it uh, on an older person, you know, uh, uh, yeah, um, like an older woman, if she acts so sexually open, you ask yourself, what's happened with her? <laughs> why she act like that? But also you ask yourself that with young generation, like, you know, you see a lot of girls go, uh, went out to bars and drinking and try to like be so cool and try to be the right person and try to be like, you know, so I ask myself all the time, why she does, why she, why she does that, you know, what's her pain? I think it's, I think it's so interesting, Lihi, what you just said, because I also felt that watching that it's a there's a relationship also with the viewer and the show and I found as I was watching it at times I would be making assumptions or asking questions about Sophie or Alice and then I would have to take a step back and say oh what are what are those preconceived um understandings of women whether by age or 
comfort with their sexuality or mm -hmm. desire to be creatively fulfilled or desire to have a really great job. What are those things that we bring to the table? Um, Ayala, what did you think of Alice when you, when you got to know her? And was there a moment where you said, okay, now I get this person? Um, it was a gradual falling in love, I guess, because, um, and I'm leaving aside the fact that I had tremendous, uh, respect to the writing because I think she, Seagal is an amazing writer and particularly here she achieved something so unique because of the way she breaks down the characters and our perception of the characters and she does something very special. But for me, Alice... Um, it was a gradual understanding of what she's about. I do, I did understand deeply the need to be creative, and I do understand on a deeper, on a very deep level, the need to do that no matter what. And I do understand the tunnel, tunnel vision that she's getting into, and how risky it becomes. Um, all these things I got, but there was a discussion that I remember having with Sigal where I, for some reason, I can't even remember why, but in my mind, she, there was a victim aspect to her choices and how she goes about it. And then uh, we talked about that, and Sigal was saying that everything is by choice. There's no victimizing here at all. And once this clicked to me and I understood that everything that Alice does, she does by choice because she has a deep desire to create. She has a deep desire to go deep into her fear, her, her um, emotions, the, the, the things she's disgusted but also attracted to. Um, and she's really kind of like a phoenix, you know, she's like, she will burn everything down just to have that feeling. Once I got that, I got so, I, I really fell in love with her because it's um, riding a passion wave. You know, Lee was talking about music and I really relate to that. I also hear music when I see stories and I see characters, I, 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 can, I can really relate to that. So once I got the right wavelength, this was like so much fun. It was also hard, but it was also fun. Addic oh. Addicted. Addictive in a way, like okay. Alice is. She's addicted. She's an addict, really. <laughs> I want to know what music you guys listen to before you film scenes. Ooh, Seagal. Seagal has to tell you that. Oh, she's so good. She has, um, she has a phenomenal list. <laughs> it's true. Uh, are, are you are, are you asking that regarding the, the fact that I, I I direct with music, by the way. So I don't know if you're asking that because you know, oh, I didn't, because you know that or because you're, um... I didn't know that. What, what do you mean you direct with music? Yes. Um, I, there, it's a technique that I use as a, as a director and, and kind of before a scene, I, I will put on a certain song so that the actors understand the the tone that I want to create in the in the specific scene and um, you know there's a lot of scene there, there's also a lot of scenes in this in this series who, that don't have dialogue and so sometimes in those scenes I would just keep playing the music because you can because like when you're filming you you when you're talking you have to put the music off but and you, because you know I think there's something in music that you can really create an atmosphere and it, it puts everybody can get into the same tone and sometimes it can even give you a body movement or and so so there were a lot of songs and music that we were listening to to listening to throughout the series um like while blocking the scene like like while like a second before shooting like what or tell us or, some songs there, there's many. There's, there's. It's, it's very. It was classical music, right? A lot of classical music. Part of it. A lot of. Um, for me, it was never classical. Funky music. But for you, it was never classical, really. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. No, it was classical for you when you were writing when you were reading the script. Oh, maybe then. Yes. 
Um, but not with me and David, if, no. if I remember, or me, me and Lee. No. Alison Sophie. Sophie. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I love that. I, I think that's that's so interesting. Sigal, I did want to ask you what Ayala just said about talking to you about um, about Alice and, and figuring out how at, at, at any given time, in any given episode, either Sophie or Alice could be a victim or a perpetrator, depending on where they are in the story. And how how did you approach writing that, Sigal, and directing that? Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm really happy that's the feeling that kind of, because I think women, the way we're judged in society today, it's always also like between being the victim and being the person that, that's making the, the choices and, um, and while writing this, it really was a different process than anything I, I'd ever written before because I really, um, I, I really let, I, I created two very strong characters and kind of let them take me through the story. And I was back and forth and I really explored, um, I could really explore this in a way uh, that I got a lot of freedom from the production company, from Dory Media and from Hot, the Israeli um, network that it was on, to really kind of have fun and do my thing. I didn't have to give in like treatments and arcs and know from the top, uh, like you do in most series, where where you're going. And then sometimes I guess if you know, it's it's more obvious for the audience as well. So the fact that I was really exploring and kind of, it became like addictive to me as a writer because I didn't know, <laughs> like it was, I have to get back to the computer to see where the, where the, where these characters are going to take me. And so in that sense, and then I think it was always uh, connected to something very deep and real and to real issues that I wanted to say and explore as a woman and, and being a, a mother and a, and a, and a wife and, and on one hand and, and the urge to, to create and, and be able to, to do my thing on, on the other hand. So it was... Yeah, a, I mean, I, I think you, you've described it. I've read other interviews. You described it as a, as a love letter to female directors, and w which I which I think is so important. I think especially because they're especially uh, there. It seems that women in on screen, whether in in actual life or on the screen in this in this universe that you've created, if you're twenty something, you have your role. And if you're maybe 70 something, you have your role. And there's that middle ground of women that Hollywood or, you know, the, uh, the film and TV industry in Israel or, or wherever doesn't quite know what to do with and just has a general discomfort with because they can't figure out exactly what are you. Um, and Ayala, did that aspect of this show speak to you? Very much so. And funny enough that you mention it because yesterday I was looking at something uh, online and I stumbled upon an article about Anna Magnani, uh, the film uh, actress who is one of my absolute favorite. Uh, she's Italian. And it's, it, it talked about how in the 50s when she broke into the American market, they were writing about her that she's not she's squarish and not looking great and she has weird teeth yet she's an absolute uh, explosion of talent and things like that and and how refreshing her approach was because she was so naturalistic and all the hollywood um uh, films uh, p represented women in such an archetype way that she kind of broke the mold and not to say that this is the same because she's really high up in my you know but um, in a way Seagal has done that in her writing because she took characters that we think they're going to go one way and then they go another way and then they go another way and then in the end it goes back to the beginning and you kind of you know some people watch it twice and 
it's it, I think the reason they watch it twice is because they don't get it because it doesn't sit in the inside the mall inside the drawers inside the you know the um, archetypes that we're so used to seeing and uh, and what we expect in some I, ways. I, I found the, these two characters of Alice and Sophie, they're almost like magnets and, and one when one pushes more, the other's pulling more and, and vice versa. And in many ways, they both want to be what the other, or they both want what the other has at, at, at different points. Um, Lee, did you have moments where, where you had questions that, that you went to Seagal and said, I, I don't, I don't, understand this why Sophie would do this um actually I don't remember maybe Seagal remembers something like that but um I don't remember that um that I had like a you know maybe Seagal thinks about something no I actually think that I think Lee really <laughs> understood <laughs> Sophie very, very well, and you know the music she was talking about in the in the beginning. I think, as a director, like when I hear an actress or actor um, doing the the text as I wrote it, like in the tone, because you you write it in a certain way, you hear it in your head. And then all these actors can come in and they're doing it in a certain way and it's not the way you wrote it in your head. And then when you hear the actor that comes in and they're saying it exactly the way that you heard it in your head, you know, yeah. that's, that's when you go, hmm. Or if it's suddenly even better than you heard it in your head. It's like something you didn't, it's, it's not as you heard it in your head, but it's, but it's, ooh, that's, that's even, <laughs> so... So both of these beautiful ladies, you know, they had that. And so in the so there was never I don't remember with neither of you like I mean we explored and we dug deep to 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 kind of understand the the pacing and but they but they both kind of really uh understood their characters and kind of took them and and fill them with their, with their things like I mean like I felt that uh, her um, Sophie's will was so clear to me was so clear to me you know so I like I I I I don't think that I had a scene that I didn't know why she's doing that you know because it was really clear to me that she doesn't see. She's like see. Um, she sees uh, her boyfriend, like her big boyfriend. You know, her father's issues she have, and she she. In the end, I feel that <laughs> I feel that she sees Alice, but but I think that she's only see her creation and what is good for her creation and how she sees her creation, and she sees that. Alice is the director, and Gali uh, and the David is the is the actor, the the main actor, and you know, and and every time something is going wrong, so she will do anything, even mean things or manipulative things to make it right, as mm -hmm. she as she sees it. So, I think her will was um, like her will. How can I say Ratzon like? Yeah, um, desire. desire, desire, passion. Like, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, like her passion, like her biggest passion to make her creation alive as she sees it. So, it was very clear to me. I love that losing Alice is airing now during the pandemic in the United States. I mean, for many reasons. One, because we get to watch a great show, but also there's something. There is a. There, it feels appropriate to this time in some ways. There's a loneliness uh, about it. There's a figuring out what happens when I come out of this time about it uh, that feels eerily appropriate in many ways. And I was wondering, what, how was it? I think it aired in Israel in, in March, so maybe before everything. We're just at the very beginning when things were starting to lock down. Oh, June. Is the, June. Oh, it was in June? Is the is the reaction in Israel any different than the reaction here? Do you find the the response um, 
I don't know, just different depending on who was watching it. Oh my God, I totally felt it. You did? How so? I don't know, because I feel like, you know, in Israel, um, um, I already, I talked about it a lot because, you know, um, in Israel, they don't usually uh, do that genre. They usually, um, I don't want to judge, I, I don't want to like be judgmental, you know, but they, they, most of the shows here in Israel, it's about cops, it's about um, the religion stuff, um, it's about army, it's about um, uh, wars that we had here in Israel. And I mean, there is a place for a genre like that, and there is um, a few series uh, uh, in that genre, but it's not really common in, in, here in Israel. And I felt like losing Alice came in, uh, came in Israel. It felt like because of all of that, you know, it's, it's really uh, a lot of uh, with the kinky and a lot of like with the sexual part. So it was like um, uh, something else here in Israel, like something they, they've never seen here in Israel. And I, I really felt the difference between like how it came here in Israel and how it came in the U.S., you know, because I felt like there, uh, there's a lot of um, space for that genre in the U.S. So, yeah. yes, I feel totally the difference. Ayala, did you feel that too, especially living in the States? Um... I don't know if there's a big, uh, if I felt the difference, like Lihi, because of because she's there and I'm here, I can say to the, I can talk about the, the first thing you said about the fact that um, it, there's a correlation to the time where we are now, that you're ha you said you're happy mm. that it's actually airing now. And I think it's actually really true and interesting because I think one of the um, layers of this show is not be, being a writer that's not being able to write and then stuck in a room in this claustrophobic place where you are not being able to create or produce or be or be what you used to be uh, and that suffocation where Alice begins the story that to me is actually reflecting um, the time we are because when we sit at home during COVID and and especially when you know the house we were stuck in the houses and um, during quarantine or whatnot um, there is exactly that the sense of like who are we now a sense of uh, identity uh, unclear identity if we can't produce what what who am I what am I what what is my worth and I think kind of hits where um, Alice begins the story. For sure. Siga, was there a scene or a, a moment or a plot twist for you that was the most challenging to write or to find? Hmm. <laughs> it, it, it all was. Like, I, I, I finished writing episode one and I was like, what am I going to do now? Or <laughs> it was... It was um, it's always tough. And, and, you know, also the first day of shooting, it, it was like, I, I, I really, nobody can tell because I have like a really, I always, I've heard it seem like very cool persona or you can't tell even now that I'm like shaking from every uh, uh, video uh, interview or anything. But like the first day of filming, I was, I was really having an anxiety attack and I was like, how am I going to direct this? I, I wrote something. I, I think it's actually good. Maybe uh, maybe I'll bring a a, a a good director so that I don't, you know, fuck <laughs> this thing up. And um, and so I think I think it's always challenging. And I think every episode that that kind of you finish is is like wow. I can't believe another one is done. And every twist um, that was found in the story and and going back and and kind of putting it all together so it, it was all this kind of puzzle and it was and and I, you know and I think that's part of what I wanted to show you know just talking about a, a love letter to the female director or to the creator let's say I think it's always 
it always combines um, pure joy because there's, I think whoever does this, there's not a lot of things that bring you joy as, as, as creating something and directing something. And, and with that, there's always a lot of, I think, panic and anxiety and what am I doing? And is this worth it? I, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you really, you really go through, I mean, especially writing something like this. I mean, this isn't based on a book or it's not anything historical. So there were moments where, where like panic, anxiety attacks. This is, who's going to, this is, what am I doing? What am I doing? This is, and so, yes, it was all between challenge and, you know, uh, days walking around saying, I'm a genius. And, <laughs> and then days saying, this is the worst. This is going to finish my career. <laughs> we, 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 we all we all have those days. Ayelet, I know that Seagal didn't give you the script to the final episode until I, I think until later, right? You were, you were already in. What was your reaction when you saw how this series ended? Um, yeah, um, Seagal gave me a, a bunch of episodes and then all the way until seven. Um, and. Uh, I read them and I had an idea where the story is going and he was very wise to do that. He didn't want me to judge anything because she wanted me to have through through the rehearsal, rehearsal an opportunity to look at it like the viewer does with the first look. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it was the last day of rehearsals when she uh, gave me uh, the last uh, episode and uh, and and I and I and I read it and I I didn't change my mind. <laughs> I think the beautiful thing about good writing is that there is a, a sense of um, the subconscious is always there, whether it's in the background or up front, it's always there. So internally, I kind of knew where this is going, but didn't know the details. I can't explain to, to... I have to be very careful. You can't. So. You can't. I can't. <laughs> I know, I know. So, um, but that's what I can say. I can say that this was there all the time. Exactly there. But towards the end of the filming where we actually... We shot towards the end of the episode 8. And I, and I think Seagal was, went, went back to rewriting a few things. And make, make, she made it really like crystal clear and it was really beautiful to see how the process affected her and her writing and how this affected us it was like a a, a beautiful um dance of this whole thing coming together um and and i actually really enjoyed it because at first i was like what do you mean i can't read the end i gotta <laughs> read the end <laughs> gotta know the end <laughs> And she said, trust me, trust me, you don't want to know the end. <laughs> and she was right, actually. She gave me an opportunity to be really objective mm. instead of subjective. Lihi, when you play a character who is so larger than life, like, so like Sophie, did you find yourself after you wrapped thinking about, hmm, what, this is what I think may have happened to her? or either filling in a backstory or a future story? Um, um, yeah, of course. Um, about the, the end of the script, um, I totally said to Sigal that uh, she also didn't want me to read the end of the script, but I told her that, she, that I have to, that I have to, because if I... I felt like all the time that I had to know. No, with what's you, going. I wanted you to read it. I just wanted to wait for the you for had the right to, moment. Yeah, for the right moment. Yeah, and all the time I was so nervous to to read it because I all the time felt that I had to know what's what's going on with that girl. You know, why does she act like she like she does, and why 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 she why is she so crazy? Why is she so manipulated? Why she can't be so mean? And so, like, sexually, what's what's going on with your sexuality? What, like, you know? Um, so I all the time felt Does that she own any had... bras? What? Does she own any bras? No. 
I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't care. She doesn't care about bras. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah. So I felt like I all the time need to uh, to know her background and and sh so it wouldn't. So it won't be like only. I'm crazy. I'm uh, I'm so sexy. I'm young girl and joyful. And you know. Um, and I hope the the audience will see the end and <laughs> will understand. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> it will be really sexy if they won't understand. But um, yeah, but I I felt like you know when I played Sophie the that time. So I felt like um, after I you know go went home. So I felt. I, I am the character. I know it's a cliche and a lot of uh, actresses and actors say it, you know, that uh, they leaving the, the character. Um, but I actually felt that I can't do a cut with her confidence. Like she has so much confidence, like even when I walked the street. So I felt like I need to be seen like Sophie, you know, she all the time has that want to be seen. So mm -hmm. all the time I felt like I, I went crazy while, while I played played her, yeah. Um, Sigal, what can you say about maybe an, another season? Do you have in your mind maybe um, further stories with these characters? And, and I feel that there could be even with these and also just a spin-off with Alice's mother-in-law. <laughs> as just a comment. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That abso absolutely spin off for Tammy. Um, no, this this story is is uh, comes to an end in, in episode eight. So it's it's done. This story is closed. It's um it's like a movie in that sense. I mean, it always was mm. like a an eight episode movie, but it's it's just this one movie. It's not um, for this story. Well, I, I'm so excited. Everyone mm. should watch until the end to see the conclusion of this very thrilling movie. I want to thank. Lihi and Ayelet and Sivan so much for joining me. Losing Alice is streaming on Apple TV Plus right now. For sure. Do not miss a moment. Do not miss that finale. Congratulations to all three of you. I can't Thank wait you. to see what you all do next. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us and to Taj and to everyone at 92Y. Thank you so Thank much, you. Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica.